Hey, everybody, welcome to the show. And uh, yeah, we're back again here to talk about an awesome book called The Grim Reaper. It's the second issue, but we're going to learn a little bit more about it. So let's turn it over to our guest. How are you doing? Hey, hello, Crystal. Thank you very much for having me today. I'm very happy to be here. And yeah, my name is Carla Tornielli. I am the artist and letterer and colorist and everything visual <laughs> from the Green Reaper series. And my husband, he's a writer and creator of the Green Reaper. He's John Gallagher. And yeah, we, we created Green Reaper 1 back in August. And now we are with Green Reaper issue 2 and also a spin-off with it. Nice. So we talked a little bit about this before we went live, but how is it kind of juggling all of that stuff on your second book already? All right. So um, The Green Reaper is a cosmic horror uh, story. Uh, this is actually book one, as you can see, um, which was oh, really, that is so nice. Yeah, yeah. It's very shiny, really good quality. And backers loved it. It was very well received. Look, this is some of the pages. Like, uh, as you can see, my style is a little manga-ish. <laughs> and yeah, this is a cosmic horror story in which Death is the hero. He is the protagonist. And in this story, we don't have people as characters, but we have concepts. So you will see Death. Uh, he's Azrael, the angel of death, who is tired of being the Green Reaper. He doesn't want to be it anymore. So he passes the mantle to World War I pilot, um, the Red Baron. Uh, he is chosen to be the next Green Reaper. So we will be learning with him how to be a good Green Reaper. <laughs> and, That's very nice. Because, I mean, yeah. it always feels like the Grim Reaper to me, like it's just his job, and he's just kind of reluctantly doing it. Yeah. I mean, who would want to be the Grim Reaper and, you know, just collect souls all day? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, uh, we as, as humans, as uh, of course, as living people, uh, for us, death is something scary, bad horrible. You say death and oh no, I don't want to have anything to do with that. But actually, uh, without death, uh, universe would be chaos. So death is also a part of the balance in universe. So that's why that, that that's a, a very interesting concept that it's shown uh, in this book, like death is actually necessary for things to work as they should. And well, yeah, this Green Reaper just is his job, you know? <laughs> and of course, uh, like any of us, you, it's very relatable because uh, he has bosses, of course, like anybody in his job. He has children. And his children are made of, uh, of the energy that is produced when people die in a certain way. He has three children in this first book. And uh, one of the, let, let me find the page so I can show you. Uh, here we have Themis. This is Themis. She she's the beautiful dead. She represents like the beautiful way to die. You know, uh, dying of age, sleeping in your bed peacefully. Mm -hmm. the, the way that way. everybody wants. <laughs> exactly. The yeah, way. Then we have Persis. Persis here. Oh wait, here this red guy. <laughs> this one. <laughs> he is. He uh, represents um, sacrifice. And um, well, hey, hey, El Gargoyle, <laughs> he represents hey, the sacrifice and the, the kind of death that is for somebody else, heroic deaths, for example, like in war, you know. Mm -hmm. and it's very yeah, I think it's really interesting how my husband uh, indicated me he wanted this character, he didn't want any like muscle, big uh, character, uh, he represents uh, being brave. But he's actually super skinny, super like a weakling. But that's actually how actual, like I'm not saying physically, but when you are actually brave, you don't have to be strong or anything. You just have to be brave to do this great stuff. You know, uh, even uh, despite the fact he is very skinny and a weakling, he still sacrifices and volunteers to do stuff. He doesn't have to. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know if, if it's understandable what I'm trying to say, but I mean... No, you, that, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, like anybody could be brave in, you know, everyday life, yeah. Yeah, and for example, maybe 
it's not bravery when there's a fight and this huge uh, boxer uh, mus mu full of muscle guy goes to fight. Maybe a, a very skinny guy goes to fight and he's really, really brave because he actually doesn't have anything to fight with, only his courage. Mm -hmm. So anyway, well, like if there's a situation where there's like a kid in the road and somebody kind of pushes them out of the way of danger, I guess you could say that would yeah. also be like everyday definitely. bravery type thing. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It, it doesn't have to be anything special to be uh, brave. And also we have six, which is this one here, which is my favorite. Um, he's the, you do the coloring on this as well. Sorry. Like, uh, do you do the coloring for this book as well? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Everything nice. visual. Yeah, because yeah. it looks really great for the style Thank you that you're going much. for. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I went for like very uh, bright colors. Uh, let me show you. This is one of my favorite pages in coloring. Oh, this is very colorful. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of special effects and stuff. And I think that this kind of paper, it's a, a, a very thick, um, like satin paper, very nice quality that makes the color pop. It looks a little glossy too. Yes, like like this is the best quality ever out there. Uh, so that it, it also helps the colors to pop more and it actually like makes justice to all the hard work I took with my tablet. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah I, I tried to do it with, with another kind of paper and all the colors were but anyway, uh, let, let me finish my idea with sticks. Uh, but <laughs> um, sticks is actually, look, here we have it big. He's in very immature and he represents the dumb deaths, the kind of deaths when you like fall in the shower and you crack your skull or something like that and you <laughs> die like that. And my or favorite, the TV falls on top of you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And my, my favorite part about sticks is that he gets stronger as people get more stupid. You know, when somebody does something stupid, it mm. gets stronger. Well, he's so. gonna get a lot of power pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no. Yeah, and, and my husband always is repeating a long story that humans are very stupid. Um, you are a human too, and he says, Yeah, I'm stupid too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, like the, the, the focus of this book is not from the living people, it's from um, concepts and like how do you say, uh, well, I, I don't have the word now, but you know, things, things. <laughs> how, how, the, mm -hmm. how things, if they were people, they would see us humans, uh -huh. you know? So yeah, well, anyway, that's Green Reaper 1, but now we have Green Reaper 2, which is what I'm going to talk about. I, I talk crystal, like I can talk for hours and hours, just tell me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it always worked for a live stream, though, so that that's perfect. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Yeah, well, actually, uh, this is the sequel. This is Green Reaper issue two, in which the Green Reaper encounters a different problem. Uh, the Green Reaper does not only have to, like, take the souls away from the living, but he also has to make sure that immortals never die. So in this story, an immortal dies. One of the scenes, last, she, she dies. And that cannot happen. So all the higher ups get very mad at the Green Reaper because you just cannot let that happen. And he he actually did. I mean, he 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 didn't know how it happened. So now in this story, it's like a detective esque story in which he will have to find out uh, who killed uh, last and with what because you cannot kill an immortal with just anything with a knife or anything it has to be something special so we're gonna learn that in this story and um, yeah also we have a spin-off because i was telling crystal that my husband is a machine of ideas and in the time that i can draw one story he writes 14. <laughs> <laughs> you'll never run out with that yeah yeah so um I lost it. Wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the spin-off. Uh, in the spin-off, uh, it's it's uh, situated in pre-communist Russia. Uh, it's the characters are Rasputin, the mad monks of Siberia. Uh, there's a lot of historical fiction here, like a lot of people that actually existed with facts that actually happened. But my husband, like, 
makes makes them work for the story. Oh wait, sorry. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we have Rasputin here. He is a really very good friend of the Green Reaper because he he's a very well known rec necromancer from from that era. And ah, interesting. The, yeah, yeah. So the Green Reaper comes and tells Rasputin, "Hey, buddy, you know uh, you're gonna die very soon." So. Rasputin is drinking vodka in, in a tavern and he invites the Green Reaper to have a drink with him. Okay, well, what can I do? If it's my time, it's my time. Come join me, let's have some vodka. And they get very drunk and party and then they dance and sing. And um, Rasputin challenges the Green Reaper to an arm wrestling competition in which they bet if that's Rasputin wins, yeah, that's just my husband, my husband in a natural. This is I, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's really fun, but it's typical of my husband. <laughs> like that kind of ideas that it's so crazy. I but it's fun. That. A wrestling match. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. Like we actually have that in the campaign. So after after we talk, if you want to see, uh, we have a couple panels of that. Like they are like drinking. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, actually, um, they bet in which if if Rasputin wins, uh, the Green Reaper will let him be alive. So uh, Rasputin cheats and manages Hello. to win. So the Green Reaper gives Rasputin a medallion with which he will never die as long as he wears it. And as you may know, and maybe all the history fans out there no, Rasputin, like in real life, was so hard to kill. They shot him, they throw him in a frozen river, uh -huh. they did everything to him, and they never, crazy. Yeah, yeah. they never could kill him. So my husband explains that he was wearing the medal. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Interesting. Yeah, the thing is that then uh, they get the medallion away from him, and they manage to kill him. Uh, so the medallion gets passed to Anastasia, and then the story goes on. I, I cannot give give more uh, story, but that that's like the premise of the story. So, okay, let me see. What Reaper will come from? Karina Bertrano, Trinity Jones, or Gabriel Fernandez? I don't know. Do you know Crystal? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you tell us the reference. Yeah. You tell us. <laughs> Good question. Good yeah. Point. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's pretty much it. Can I get the link to come on and talk? Uh maybe like sometime on the weekend we might do like an open mic stream where people can come on and talk to creators and stuff like that. Because that'd be pretty neat. Sounds fun. But yeah. Nice. Indeed. That way people in the chat can just hop on and chat. Also, yeah, today's just talking about the book, though. So sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can comment. Come on, come on. Ask your questions. Yeah. If you have anything you want to say. Though, yeah, the comment in the comments for sure. And it'll get yeah. answered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what kind of got <laughs> you into comics and finding out about Comicsgate and all of that? Oh, okay. That's a very good story. <laughs> I, I actually am a manga artist. I've always been very big into manga. I never read a comic, actually. Sorry, guys. <laughs> now I do, but before, no, no. I, I was a very big manga fan. I'm a huge fan of Rumiko Takahashi. She's my favorite mangaka. And oh, neat. Yeah, yeah, she, she did Inuyasha, Ranma, mm -hmm. you know, a, a lot of stuff, like, she, she's my goddess. <laughs> and, yeah, I, I've been drawing, like, all my life, basically. And, yeah, when I met my husband, he, we met because he hired me for a project. <laughs> wow, that's yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like um, that, that's how we met. And now that we're married and everything, we decided, okay, let's just have comic babies. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's, that's uh, when the Green Reaper was born. This sounds so weird. Okay. <laughs> so that's such a cool meetup story, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he hired me. And well, then I promise we were very proficient at first, but well, then everything went to. Chaos. 
<laughs> but anyway, like now, now we're producing the Grim Reaper. It's a trilogy. It's uh, it's three parts, but also two spin-offs. So this is the first spin-off. Then we, we're gonna have another one. Um, and after that, we're planning to do the story, uh, the the story that made us to meet. That story is called Cosmo Monkey. <laughs> Um, we didn't manage to finish never the story because I don't know we fell in love and forgot about the story. But <laughs> we're actually going to make it. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> really hilarious. Yeah, we, we're like we're a pair of nerds. <laughs> Just curious if there might be future mystery reapers. Um, what do you mean mystery reapers? Well, I guess if there'll be any grim reapers, like are there more than one? Or is there just like one designated reaper? Oh, or will they, we see like a couple more pop out of the woodwork, I guess. You're gonna love the third book. <laughs> That's all I can say. Ah, <laughs> yeah, back, you know, get the first book and uh, back to the second one, guys. Yeah, that, that, that's, you that's know, find out. <laughs> yes, that, that's all I can say to you, on Gargle. Like, you're gonna love the third book if that's your question. <laughs> Nice. But oh, about Comicsgate, though. Oh, about Comicsgate. Yeah, I, I forgot. Sorry. No um, worries. No, it's yeah. Cool. It was a cool sidetrack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay, we decided to have our comic babies. So, yeah, I started drawing and he wrote it, everything. We were very happy. No idea that Comicsgate existed or anything. We just did a comic because we love to do that. And um, well, we. We launched on Indiegogo. We only have like our moms and a grandma in, in Facebook, but that's all, all the following we had. <laughs> we still launched because I don't know, we just did it to see what happened. We were ex feeling experimental. And actually, my husband then told me, hey, I believe there's something called comics gates for people. Uh, like for indies, because we were actually trying to submit our stories to like comic like image, and stuff like yes, that. yes, and it was very frustrating because um, they didn't even respond, and if they responded, they, they sent us months um, and months later. Like, I'm sure. What? Sorry. Like, uh, like usually it takes them months to respond, and if it is, it's like uh, to find out that you got rejected. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It, the, I think this was even worse. They sent us like an, a poll. No, not a poll, like a formulary. Like, are you Latino, Black, a woman? Uh, you know, what do you oh, no. do? Do you think most people know? <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Yeah, oh, what, what, you care what we are. No, I did see a one comic company. Like when you're going to submit to them, they ask you weird questions like that on the submission form. Like I'm not going to say who, but yeah, it is definitely out there. Yeah, sure. but th that means they don't care about the story. They just care uh -huh. about who you are to make politics out of you. You know? Yeah, it, it sucks. Yeah, and like we we were engaging to that. We we weren't. That, that was hey, Optimus. Hey, Optimus. Mwah. Optimus is a very proud backer of Green Reaper 2, and he's getting Viper drawn in, in, in the Green Reaper 2 as a werewolf from hell. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I know Piper loves werewolves, and there's yeah. little, like <laughs> jokes on the show. Yeah. <laughs> And a lot of a lot of the story happens in hell, so a lot of hellish creature creatures will be there. And the the, the cool part is that um, we're gonna be making like the backers that that by the the drawing tier they actually get like named. You know it's them, you know. So for everybody that reads, you know it's them. They will call hey Piper or something Piper, blah blah blah, blah Piper. <laughs> <laughs> they will know it's her. And um, yeah, I, I think it's a really a really cool thing that, that you can actually like be a part of of the process of creation of a, of a comic. Uh, but I was I you got designated reapers for particular death. There's not one for the horrible ones. Oh, just you wait, just you wait. <laughs> suspense, no. Just you wait. There's a lot oh. more. Hey guys, yeah. Um, but I was talking about CG. Um, how we got to CG. 
okay, we were very frustrated with that. And then my husband, due to that, remembered that CG was like, for people like us, like we weren't just uh, going to accept the reality of uh, just the decadence of comics. Just, mm -hmm. It's just a means of doing politics with women or whatever, you know? So we actually started using the, the hashtag in Twitter, but, you know, complete ignorance. No idea whatsoever what that was. Just, okay, uh -huh. I think it to it. us. And that's when people started talking to us. And it was actually my husband, the first one, and they added him to a group called the CG Creators Group. And everybody, hell, John, hell, John. And my husband, I don't know what they're saying, hell, but hell. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm sure that what was interesting. What was going in a good on? Way, yeah. yeah, like imagine, like from the complete nothing. Like so welcoming, yeah. So welcoming, so good, such great people, all creators. Like it, it was like, welcome to heaven, brother. Here, take my hand. Come with the <laughs> angels. It felt like that. We were like, no, this can't be that good. And, and it was, it was like that. It still is. And we learned everything we know about creating comics. And uh -huh. like, and everybody's so helpful. And I love how if there's a problem or whatnot, people will be there to help you with the So definitely. understanding, just the best, yeah. Yes, definitely. And you know that they even like, other creators taught us how to do everything, like from printing and, fulfilling and everything like they are supposed to be competition they are not supposed to be good mm -hmm. with that this is so hard to understand like what's the deal here why are they being that good why <laughs> you know because uh -huh. you and i mean everybody's easy to contact too you know like if there's yes. somebody that you want to you know ask a question it's like they're right there on twitter you know on youtube you have the comment section it's just crazy how accessible everybody is yes and they all started pushing the book and retweeting and helping us and we're like what, what did we do to deserve this service? no they, they, there has to be something we don't understand because of, of course you at first are very like skeptical like how does this work why why are they being that good? Uh -huh. i didn't do anything for them why, why are they like that with me so like you know and uh -huh, it's a, beautiful crazy. Thing, a beautiful community and you know that that just that just by telling you that like is the first the best place to be if you are a co indie comic creator but there's even more to it this is like the the strawberry in on, on the cake <laughs> the cherry on top because uh, in january the 6th of january we had a house fire and we lost everything we had oh. everything everything like not a single thing survived I escaped the house like wearing socks. I didn't have shoes. You know, uh, we lost absolutely everything. It was a total loss. And CG actually, they did a GoFundMe and they raised some money to help us. So that's, that's how family behaves. That, that's yeah, how that's family crazy. behaves. Like, that makes you think like, we're so blessed to be in a community with people like this. Because only yeah, you, you so are really caring and helping each other. No, yeah, it nah. was so so moving. Like, wow, no, no. It, so when people is being hateful to CG, they have no idea what they're doing, or maybe they are just being paid, you know, to do that. Because it just makes no sense. How can somebody like mess with CG? Because the people there, no, it's ridiculously amazing people and we we love cg or cg to the core <laughs> yeah that's it's just something else for sure yes yes and what were like some of your uh, inspirations as far as the style that you went about uh, you know making the grim reaper in was there any particular inspirations or anything like that well that that's a, a whole Thing because well as for my husband he that he when he wrote this he he told me he was very inspired in Neil Gaiman from The Sandman he told oh, me oh wow. I was kind of wondering that because yes. I was getting vibes from the pages yeah. that I've seen so far looking on yeah. your campaign 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me that's that's his inspiration. But as for me, I, I'm a manga artist, so I'm very used to draw manga. I try to go more more like Western-ish, but still not Western enough. I don't know. You more decide enough, for yourself. Yeah. Uh, it's like a blend. I don't know, but I I think it works. I I really like it, and I I like all these crazy colors. Look, this is a the Red Baron. Ooh, the Green Reaper. Very nice. Yeah, thank you. And I, I also like a lot to like choose different scenes and choose a whole different palette for every scene. So you get a lot of variety in the visuals. You know, like this is this is really manga-ish. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some butt there, yeah. Uh, we, we have Very to nice. I mean, the color pops too when you look at it, which oh, is yeah. nice because if somebody walks into the comic shop, you know, it's like you open it up and just all of the color right there to yeah, catch exactly. your eye. <clears throat> However, with the cover, we did it exactly the opposite. Look at the cover. Like, it can well, be. It looks spooky though. Look at that. I mean, that would be something that I definitely pick it up off the rack. It's like, oh, there's a giant skull on it. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we were I told. Check we, it out. Yeah, yeah we, we right. were told uh, by Tim Hadnick, he, he chose The Green Reaper as his second favorite book of 2019 of CG. Oh, wow. That's a huge honor. Come on. <laughs> it's our first book. <laughs> Yeah, that's um, great. He, he told and us like, that. do you have any plans to get it out, like to comic shops or like other stuff like that? Like, what's kind of your next step as far as that? We we don't really know. We're actually like concentrating in producing everything first, and then we're gonna see. Uh -huh. uh, locally, we visited a couple of comic shops, but only one was interested, and it's there. <laughs> but not 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 many comic books were uh, stores were interested in having like such a good quality book because it's too expensive for them they sell all the comics like for four dollars and these only to print these it's more than five so to buy this it's even more expensive and they told us like uh it's too expensive for for the books oh the darn book. yeah I mean, that's like, kind of the hard thing about being an indie creator it's yeah. like stuff like that that you kind of have to navigate and yeah <laughs> There yeah. could be a whole live stream just about that, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, we we are happy with Indiegogo, and we're, we're building our YouTube channel to to build a, a bigger audience because we know that we don't have like these huge numbers uh, because we're new and we don't have an audience yet. But we are totally we totally believe that our product is really good, and yeah, it's just a matter of time until it picks up a lot. Um, if you want to subscribe to my channel, please subscribe to White Cat Comics uh, like this. And I'll post it in the chat as well. Awesome. Thank you, Crystal. Yeah, yeah no problem. Cool. And if you're looking to back the campaign, there is a link uh, below this video in the description where you can check that out. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Speaking of the Indiegogo, uh, let me try to put that on the screen real quick. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Okay. All right, okay. there we go. That's all. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're first of all very happy because in the first campaign, like our, like the the most we, we did with in demand and also in the funding phase was a uh, hundred, um, Seventeen hundred dollars, and now we passed. Uh, we passed much more than that. Hey, Sim, what's up? <laughs> Sim hey, did yeah. a great. He did Always a great good see Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I keep interrupting. No Very sorry. No <laughs> You're yeah, good. like I, I was telling you guys. Oh yeah, thank you very much, Sim. Thank you very much. Um, uh, since we reached two K. Uh, actually, people is going to get a free pinup with their purchase. Uh, if you mind, Crystal, please, can we go look a little bit below? Uh, yeah, no problem. So Let me can... scroll it down just a little bit. All right. So we can see them. 
the pinups. We have three different pinups to choose from. Let's see. I did a like a dram dramatic change to the campaign. So if you're used to see that from a certain way, now it's very different. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Yeah. Let's see. Tell me if I overshoot it. Because yeah. It's it's so weird because I just got like a new computer and a new mic in the same day. So <laughs> it's like, I know it's like the weirdest so thing. That, that's, Rasputin. To... that's Rasputin, like drinking oh. the river. <laughs> and then oh, nice. magic. <laughs> cool. This is like this artwork. It really reminds me of stuff like, uh, you know, G.I. Joe, Ninja Turtles. <laughs> and like you said, Sandman. It, like, especially this, that's so creepy right there. Oh, thanks. It's nice. <laughs> okay, so here's the pinups. Yeah, this is the sexy pinup, the most chosen one, because we, we told everybody, like, just to tell us which one you prefer. Uh, well, okay. this is the, the most chosen one. <laughs> I, I don't know why. What do you think? Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> no idea at all. <laughs> yeah, this is actually Demis. She's one of the of the daughters of the Green Reaper. And then we have Lust. She's the scene. And you can see in their faces, like, one is a scene and one is a beautiful dead. Like, I don't know. Lust is so ugly, but she has a great butt, so <laughs> that's what we care about, right? <laughs> my little Ellie loves her art color. She wants to grow up to be an artist like us. Oh, my, that's so cute. Like, that's oh. like the best compliment ever. Oh. Yeah, the best ever. See, send her like a huge hug and mwah. <laughs> oh my, you made my day, Sim. <laughs> That's so cute. Well, then, then we have the more more of the pinups below. Um, Very cool. I'll scroll down for that. Yeah. Okay, this is more like an anime poster style in which we have all the characters from the first Green Reaper. And this is actually the design for the t-shirt because we're, we're also like selling a t-shirt. Uh, that has been a success. A lot of t-shirts have been sold. <laughs> um, I mean, who wouldn't want that as a t-shirt? Like, it looks very mysterious. Yeah, yeah. And I think the colors really work uh, for a t-shirt with the black background. So, yeah. Uh, but it, it will also be a pinup if very sexy, beautiful ladies are not uh, what you're into, you can get this one. <laughs> <laughs> There's something for everyone, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and we have the third option uh, that is below this one. Nice, nice, I'll scroll down. Like, uh, did you do the art for this? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I did everything. <laughs> all the art for all the pinups, cool. Yeah. Like that must be a, a little bit easier if you can do, uh, you know, most of it. Like as an artist, because I always find it weird as a writer. It's like you're waiting on everybody. Mm -hmm. And we kind of talked about this a little bit before the stream, but it's almost like you're managing everything and waiting on people. Yes. So it I'm must be like really different as an artist. It's like, oh, I'm going to do this cover and then do the interiors and then all the extra stuff. As a writer, it's like, oh, I've got to find people <laughs> to yeah. do it. Yeah, you're very right. However, uh, an artist without a writer can go anywhere. Let me tell you, um, I, I tried to write once. It was a nightmare. It's so hard to do. I don't know how you guys do it. So my respect to everybody that writes. Uh, yeah, I, yeah it's, it's a very hard thing to do. You need to invest a lot mentally. Um, and it's just, of course, a, it's something that you study, you practice, you do a lot, and you get better at it. But for me, like it was extremely hard, and I, I, I never like to hear people like thinking that writing is like easier to say it in a way. Because of course, my husband wrote this in a day, but you know how many weeks and months he has been like cooking the idea. Like it's been in stuck in your head. head. Yeah, that's so frustrating. And then it's like trying to get that idea out of your head space and manifest it into something, you know, like a comic book or, you know, like a short film, something like that. Yeah, Just to get it out in the world, man. 
<laughs> yes, a lot of research, a lot of, yeah. Then Splendopia says, the involvement is intense. Uh, I appreciate artists. Yeah, well. Oops, I took that away a little too quick. <laughs> you're very right. Yeah, like, yeah, you're producing I definitely art. appreciate the artist, man, because that's something that I definitely cannot do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot, a lot of work. What is the spin of about? Okay, Sim, ah. we got it. <laughs> Thanks for your question. The spin off is, um, is set in pre communist Russia, um, in which we're going to see Rasputin, the mad monk of Siberia. He is a very well known necromancer, as you guys know, uh, in history, um, uh, Rasputin was like a, a magician, you know, he, he worked with death daily. Uh, so he's very good friends with the Green Reaper. He he has been uh, interacting with the Green Reaper all his life. So now the Green Reaper comes to his dear friend and asks uh, and tells him, "You know, buddy, you're going to die. Uh, your days are counted. So I just came here to tell you, uh, you know, like in a very friendly way." And then a friendly Rasputin way, says, I love it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then um, Rasputin says, "Okay." Um, if it's my time, it's my time. What can I do? But let's just have some vodka together, okay? And and party for a one last time. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, they get really drunk. Yeah, they are in a tavern. They get really, really drunk. So uh, Rasputin challenges the Green Reaper to an arm wrestle competition. And um, they um, they make a bet. If Rasputin wins, his uh, Green Reaper has to keep him alive. So actually, Rasputin uh, cheats and manages to win. So the Green Reaper gives him a medallion with which uh, he cannot die as long as he wears it. So uh, for all the history fans, uh, you may know that Rasputin was super hard to kill. Like they shot him, they put him in a frozen river. They, <laughs> they what? So they, much. They, yeah. Yeah, what what did it's almost they do? kind of cartoonish, like if yes. like stuff like Looney Tunes. Yeah, but this <laughs> they're just trying to kill each other, Tom and Jerry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Basically, that that treatment he received. <laughs> so they couldn't kill him, and the way that that my husband explains it is because he was wearing the medallion. Okay, so um, then they managed to take the medallion out of him, and they killed him. And the medallion gets passed to Anastasia. Uh, and that's when the story starts. So I cannot say more. <laughs> and then Sim here with another question. I was looking for a tier with number one and two, but it's only available with the spin-off. I was wondering. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the thing is that the spin-off is key for Green Reaper 3. So we want you to read it. <laughs> ah, so almost more of like a prelude almost kind yes of. yes uh because yeah exactly what we were talking about with crystal beforehand about the how you introduce the universe and then you start the main story okay. uh, actually yeah this pin of is like the prelude to what's coming after uh, my husband took death uh to make stories and the first one is a cosmic horror story the second one is a detective action, like very comic-esque story. And the third one is a love story. So look at all the things he did. A love there. story. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a love story. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yes. So, um, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Like he, he already uh, told me what he wrote and it's fascinating. That's the, the only thing I can tell you. Um, you will get every time more and more surprised with the story. Uh, so, read everything, trust us, you need to read everything, and you're going to love it, you're going to have a lot of fun, and as much as, like, the more you read, the more you will need more, because you're going to see yeah. that this, this is a story that is very solid, very well written, and it has a lot of lines inside the same story, like, you could branch and, and make a lot of different stories from, from this very story <laughs> oh i bet like there's so many concepts that you could yes. explore a lot of stuff going on this yeah yeah it's yes. crazy and i mean i was saying a little bit like it sounds like a broken record but before <laughs> we hopped on stream 
<laughs> and it was like I was saying about my book, like uh, The Good Night is actually more of a prequel. And I have like graphic novels that are completed and other stuff like that, but it's like there needed to be a starting point. And I was like, everybody kind of hates prequels or like spinoffs at the very end, it seems, just kind of like the consensus. Even stuff like Star Wars, you know, they did a, the prequel trilogy after the fact. And it seemed like people didn't really care about it, but there was other issues with that <laughs> anyways. But it just seems like, yeah, I don't know. It, it's better to me to start what would be the prequel before or, you know, somewhere in the middle. So it's not like people aren't gonna care about it when it is, you know, important. What so, I've yeah. seen in some animes is like, they start the story right away but then uh -huh. they release like some kind of special, like it's zero, you know, uh -huh. like number zero, which means it's before number one. Mm -hmm. But they, they release it as an extra. I don't know. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that makes sense too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just kind of depends on your story and where to fit oh. it. So it's not like too late that people don't care, mm -hmm. but just right. So it's like finding that balance as far as sequels and, you know, spinoffs and prequels, stuff like that. That's just mad. It's it's not easy. Oh jeez, yeah. That's something else, man. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Cool. And Brian posted the link in the chat. Thanks, man. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Very thank cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, like I uh, in when when I had the fire and I lost all my electronics, I also lost all the work I did with the comic. So oh, I had to redo no. everything. Um, I actually oh, like, sucks. yeah, I got like some preview of the, the things I, I did before uh, and I got them in the campaign, but you, as you can see are like low, lower quality, but now I redid everything and I'm, I'm super happy with the result. It's, it's looking so much better. If you scroll down a little bit, you're going to see how I redid everything. Like everything that was before in the campaign, I redid it and I uploaded like an hour ago. So... <laughs> And yeah, my character uh, with the wings, by the way. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry, what? Uh, this character here with the, oh. the sort of creepy wings. That's He's so awesome. Azriel, the angel of death. He was like oh. the original. Creeper. Well, that's a pretty cool design. Oh, yeah, sure. thank you. <laughs> Based in, in Clamp Angels. The, the oh, angel. Cool. Oh, yeah, that, that's Smokey. <laughs> He's called Smokey the, the horse. <laughs> He's one of the horses. Kind of like the Smokey the bear. Too far. <laughs> so is it down a little bit further or like tell me yeah more. yeah yeah just go all the way <laughs> okay go all the way go down. slowly all the way so i can show you guys the, the pages um uh, that, that's one of the pages in hell that that's last who is in hell and is being rescued by the green reaper oh nice yeah i mean i'm always interested in how people kind of give their interpretation of the reaper because there's so many different uh, versions that people have out there interpretations so it's just fun to kind of see the spin everybody can feel the concept because it's a concept but everybody has its own interpretation so that, that's very interesting and that's what's mm -hmm. also what gave my husband a lot of flexibility to write you know you can adapt death to every country, every place, every situation, every time in history. Everybody dies. It doesn't discriminate. Uh -huh. yeah. Death doesn't care if you are whatever race, uh, gender, whatever, you die. <laughs> oh, this is my black humor. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, that's cool. I love black humor. <laughs> Oh my good stuff. So I guess uh wrapping it up, uh where can people find you? Uh stuff that you want people to know, all that good stuff. Of course. Look, um I am uh, as you can see my name in, in my little window here in the stream, it's Carla underscore Tornieli in Twitter. You can find me there, uh like in this thing. <laughs> um <laughs> You can also find me in my YouTube channel, which is White Cat Comics. Um, it's in the, the, the link Crystal put in the, in the, in the comments. Uh, so you please subscribe. I just started my channel a week ago. 
And I'm really excited about it. So yeah, come join the fun. We laugh a lot. We say a lot of dumb stuff, but also very serious stuff. So you have all the stuff you want. And, uh -huh. <laughs> and also we have a web page. It's um, whitecatcomics.com, but we still are, are, are not selling in there. So it's under construction, but it's looking cute. <laughs> Yeah, very neat. And yeah, it's uh, in the comments now. So check out her YouTube channel. I just posted it there. And I'll put it in the video description as well after. Also, so I guess for me, you can find me on Twitter at Crystal McGee. And that's C R Y S T A L M C G H E E. And as far as an update on my comic, The Good Night. Uh, we're pretty close to sending out the digital file. I've just been kind of going through, making sure everything's grammatically correct. So, uh, you know, a couple of commas <laughs> that I uh, forgot to put in have now been placed, all of that good stuff. And I mean, uh, we'll be putting a hard stop probably in like a, a week or two to where we're just going to kind of just put it out and uh, get it out to you guys. It's been quite a journey and I'm excited to see it in you guys' hands. So yeah, <laughs> pretty Woo! exciting. And oh, you know, God. I post a ton on Twitter. So if you wanna stay up to date, go there. You can find the updates page on Indiegogo for the good night, check that out. And back the Grim Reaper, cause this book uh, looks pretty cool. And thanks for coming on my channel, Carla. It's Thank been you very much, Crystal. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. It was super fun and very nice to meet you. Uh, I'm also a part of CG Manga crew. That's right, Sim. I'm a part of CG Manga. And now I'm, I'm all over YouTube. <laughs> I know <laughs> Making people. waves, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Thank you, Sim, for all your support. Mwah. Yeah, and thanks chat for coming out too, because it was a pretty active chat and we just yeah. love all the comments and all that stuff is great. Thank and you. We definitely buddy. need to do like a some type of call in show where people hop on because that's always fun. Yeah, yeah. So stay tuned and we'll talk to you guys next time. Later. <laughs>